Good morning, fourth graders. Today I'm going to do you a little demonstration of placing mixed numbers on number lines. So as you can see underneath here, I have my number line, and my number line only goes from 0 to 3. So 0 to 3. So in, for, um, in kindergarten, we learned how to count, and it was really, really easy because we were always counting in holes. Today we're going to use something delicious to represent our whole, our one whole thing, and we're going to use one whole Hershey's candy bar. So here we go. If we're going to represent one, which is not a mixed number, it's just a whole number, we would have one whole Hershey candy bar. If we're going to represent two whole Hershey candy bars on the number line, the number two, we would represent it with two whole Hershey candy bars. And if we we're going to represent three delicious Hershey candy bars, we would represent that with three Hershey candy bars. So far, so good. One, two, three. That's something you learned in kindergarten. But things get a little more complicated when we want to count, but we're not going to count in holes. Like, for example, if you've ever been around a candy bar, you notice that pretty soon candy bars start to disappear and they leave parts behind. So, for example, what if we had one and a half candy bars? Well, if we had one and a half candy bars, we would have one hole, zero to one, but then somewhere in between we would have a half a candy bar. So here I have half of a Hershey's candy bar. That would mean that one and one half would be right about here. One and one half. Okay, so let's say that we were lucky enough to end up with two and one half candy bars. Well that would be one, two, and then of course one half on the candy bar and that would put us halfway between the two and the three. If we split that into two equal parts we would end up with halfway between the two and the three is two and one half. Let's try another one. If we had one and one fourth, well we would fill up between the zero and the one for one and then we would end up with one fourth of a candy bar in between. That would be halfway between the one and the one half. One and one fourth candy bars. Let's look at another one. What if we had one, or sorry, what if we had one and two fourth candy bars? Well, that would take us to right about here, which you'll notice is already being used by one and a half. And we're going to go for another one. If we keep counting along, we have one and three fourths candy bar which I'm going to cheat a little here and replace my two-fourths and then we get one whole candy bar and one, two, three out of four-fourths three out of four-fourths of the way to the number two and that gives us one and three-fourths candy bar alright let's back up for a second to one and two-fourths one and two-fourths you need to remember to simplify so if you have one and two fourths, you are going to need to make sure that you simplify it into the lowest number for the denominator, which is one and one half. And you can see that those are equal when you actually locate both of them on the number line. All right, good luck. Remember to simplify. This is Mr. Rubel.